All right, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm actually gonna talk about my journey with NixOS. So I started using NixOS about a month and a half, two months ago, and I had, I had a very interesting and good experience with it, uh, but there were some shortcomings that I did come across uh, that ultimately ended up with me switching back to Arch for my main system. So I have NixOS installed on one of my laptops, so I use that from time to time when I'm traveling and stuff, but uh, for the most part, most of my devices now have Arch on them. And I'll get into that, you know, a little bit on how I have that set up. But basically, I just want to talk about like the experience I had with NixOS and the reasons why I ended up ultimately switching back to Arch as my main system. So yeah, so overall, I, I love NixOS. I think it's a, a great project. I think it overall you know just makes sense as far as like having a one centralized location to configure your entire system you know i love that aspect of it ha having it being um declarative to be able to have you know different you know packages and um different modules and things to be able to enable and disable and the rebuild system is amazing you can you can't get that you know anywhere else so i i just love all those aspects of it i did have some some things that did not work out for me for instance my my video editor of choice which is lightworks uh i could not get that to work um on xos i don't know if it's just my configuration uh with black Dawn os or or what the actual case might have been but um i did try you know multiple different things it would install it would just get either a black screen once i got past the black screen it would uh have these like weird artifacts where it would not actually show the regular icons i'll be showing some different different ones that aren't you know loading the icons correctly i tried you know installing the icons separately and stuff like that but i just i couldn't get it to work the way I wanted it to. And I know I can use like DaVinci Resolve and stuff like that, but that's just my preferred video editor. I, I, I've had issues with DaVinci Resolve in the past, so I just, I'd rather not use it, but not to say that there's anything wrong with it. You can definitely use it if that's your choice. I, I don't particularly like it and I prefer the Lightworks um, over it. And it just has everything and I'm just used to the workflow. So for me, that's what works best for me. And it, I couldn't get it to work on NixOS. I did have a time where I was just kind of dual booting, dual booting, and I had another Arch install on another drive and I would just bounce between them when I needed to, you know, edit videos and stuff like that. And I had like the drives kind of shared so I could put my edited or my recorded videos into a folder and then, you know, edit them on the other drive and stuff like that. So, I mean, I had a workflow down, but it's just, it was just annoying to have to, you know, switch back and forth. But in switching to Arch, you know, I, I really missed a lot of the things about NixOS. I really like that, um, like I said, everything is in a configuration you know, fully determined by you. So you can have like multiple hosts, for instance. So actually, if I go back here and switch to my config. So yeah, so you can have like different hosts on there, for instance, and then under uh, modules, you could have all your different modules all in one spot and you could configure and change everything. Like I had all my binds and stuff right in here. I didn't have to go into dot config to change anything. Everything was in this folder. So that's the reproducibility um, portion of it. So I can literally just install this on another system and have everything ready to go. And uh, I love, I just love that aspect of it. Well, one of the shortcomings that I did, you know, come across is that everything had to be converted into the Nix language. Now, Nix is is a very adaptive language, um, so it, it does work um, in that sense. So, like a JSON file looks a lot like a regular JSON file, you know, you know written in Nix. So it's it's not like a huge difference. It's just some syntax and things that change throughout as you're doing it. So, like even if I go into binds here. You can see I have all these binds, but they're just in these quotation marks and you have to have them, you know, space in a certain way. Th those are just some some different syntax that you had to, you know, learn to to make sure that everything was working correctly. But that it kind of got in my way sometimes, especially when like Hyperlane made updates and stuff like that. And you're following their documentation, but it's not quite to a T for you because you're on Next <laughs> and you're trying to, you know, inherit it all in the Next language. I know you can do you can still use, you know, dot config and stuff while using it in Nix, but I think the beauty of it was having it all in one uh, directory uh, was, you know, having it very, you know, neatly and easily editable and stuff like that. So taking it out would kind of defeat the purpose. But yeah, so I, I did the same thing with Neary on here. Um, Neary was a little bit harder than Hyperland was because it didn't have like a, a direct option to actually just port everything over. But um, overall, you know, 
I, I thought those features were really nice. And b- having being able to declare your packages through a Nix file was really nice. I did like having that option and you could have them in, you know, certain modules and stuff like that. So as you install the module, it installs the packages and they're not conflicting with other, you know, packages and, and things like that. I think that, you know, is what drew, drew me to um, NixOS and having that, those features. Overall, like I'd still love the structure and everything that um, NixOS has to offer, but just for like packages and just having a, like the art is not, I wouldn't say simplistic, but it, it is more simplistic uh, than Nix um, in that regard. So, so you know, for those, re- those reasons, I um, did end up switching back. And I guess the other reason is because everything is in the Nix language, just just having to learn and understand the actual like syntax and stuff like that. It did get in my way um, sometimes where I was trying to rebuild and I kept having an error. And it, it could be something so simple, but I, it takes me like... <laughs> You know, 20 minutes just to fix it and then you know you can't actually rebuild anything unless everything is you know perfect which is a good practice to have so that way you know your system works once it rebuilds but yeah it just i don't know i had i had issues with it um so I, like i said i still have this on uh one of my laptops just so i can like update little things here and there but i'm not like actively you know changing a bunch of things you know consistently on here so but yeah so i ended up switching back to arch and one of the big things that I did when I switched back to Arch is actually create that tool. Um, you might have seen some other videos that I've created. If you haven't, it's called DCLI. And I basically just recreated the same thing that I had here. All of my configuration in this one file here called Arch Config. And just like I had in the uh, Black Down OS, I have my host up here. Um, everything is in YAML files instead of having them in Nix, um, which YAML is just really easy to uh, understand and use. And it's more uh, just a list for format. So nothing too crazy. So I just have that. And then I, I do have the module system uh, configured here. And also I have the declarative uh, package management you know, configured here as well. So if I go to like desktops. These are all of the modules that I have enabled. And then I do have some things that I um, can declare uh, within my pa- within my system as far as like backups and you can I can actually add services in here now. I did add that feature where you can add um, system D services in here so you can enable and disable them you know from the DCLI tool itself. I just haven't added it to this uh, system here uh, that I'm on right now. But but yeah, so in my in my modules here. Um, you can see I have a very, you know, similar setup where I have like, you know, Hyperland, Neary, Mango, like all of my window managers and then a bunch of different, you know, other ones for like gaming and dev and some CLI tools and, and things like that. So basically I split all these up into like if I go into my Neary one, um, I have all of the dot files in a folder and I have those syncing. So if I go into my module here, I have a dot file sync true. So when I have that, it automatically syncs all of my, everything that's in this dot files folder into the dot config within my system. Uh, so that way I can actually update everything. It sim links them. So it's not just copying them, it actually sim links them. So I can actually update um, anything within my Neary configuration. Like if I wanna update my monitors or something, I can do that in here and not have to change anything in my dot config because they're sim linked. So I can do everything within my actual configuration, but I'm, I'm just using KDL. <laughs> I don't have to use the, the Nix language. I'm just using the syntax that the documentation shows here. So everything is you know easy to follow as far as like trying to update something. If I go read documentation or go read something else that someone has posted, everything's already you know there, easy. Uh, to uh, kind of update, you know, based on that documentation. And then, so I have the same thing uh, with my Hyperland configuration. This one, I'm, I'm not using Hyperland right now. So if I go into my um, modules.yaml, I do have dot, dot file sync as false. Um, so I do not want to sync them as well because I do have some like theming and stuff in these dot files. So I don't want it to overwrite my actual um, Neary ones. I could probably add or change it so I have my dot files as far as theming and everything separate from the two and they just use the same theming. But I do have some slight variants and changes um, to like the dank uh, material shell and stuff like that. So I do have those separate. Um, as of right now, I could change those down the road. But but yeah, so I have like, you know, gaming modules. So like these are like all the gaming, you know, package and stuff I need, you know, for gaming. And then I do also have the ability to um, do post and solve scripts. So like for this controller module here, um, I have all these, you know, controller drivers and uh, packages and stuff that I install to get all my controllers working. But then I have this script that I run to get uh, the UDEV rules in, uh, in for Steam. And so that way I have like the 8-bit DOE controller and 
uh, the Vader for, for Pro and stuff like that so I can use like the back buttons and stuff in Steam. So I have those YouTube rows um, in a script so it automatically runs. So if I get it on a new PC or um, have to reinstall my system, I can literally just get that up and running, you know, super quickly. So that's, there's the reproducibility of it um, and the declarative, you know, package management side of it. So, uh, so I kind of have a lot of the, you know, same things within here. And I do have like a, an option to sync. So DCLI uh, sync uh, will actually sync my system. And if I changed anything in my system, like took a package out of the declarative system here or added a new package, it would it would install it when I do this actual sync. So it's not as robust as a rebuild per se, um, but it will uh, back up your system every time you do a sync. So that way you can restore um, if you need to. And also uh, backs up your arch configuration um, as well. So like if you made a bunch of changes, want to restore and go back, you can do so as well. So I got it to be as close as I could to the NixOS feel because I really loved like everything else about NixOS. There's certain things I just couldn't get to work in. And, and the, kind of the learning curve, I guess, is the, the biggest things that, you know, made me come back to Arch. But but yeah, so I, I feel like overall I'm happy with my system. Uh, now, if, you know, anything major changes, um, I, you know, I might go back to, to NixOS down the road. But um, I definitely feel like using the, the tool that I created here, it, I get the feel <laughs> of NixOS, um, but being able to use Arch. Um, and I think that's the best of the both worlds for me right now. So that's what I'm going to stick with uh, for now. And we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens down the road. But as always, I just kind of want to share my journey and, um, you know, what things I've come across as I go through it. So you guys can learn from either my mistakes or uh, my, you know, things that I went through and not have to go through it yourself. Uh, so, yeah, so if you enjoy my content, you know, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, it helps a lot on the, uh, for the channel's growth. And then if you want to support me for like any tools and stuff that I create, like DCLI or uh, Black Dawn OS, or if you just want to support, you know, my content creation as a whole, um, you can do so at ko-fi.com slash the Black Dawn. Um, but otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.